Talk, Coach in the Fight here. Guys, Stacy with me. Shalom, everyone. Today's class, we're going to be talking about the second coming of Christ. The second coming of the Messiah, yes. What are we going to be talking about, Stacy? Well, we're going to take it down to how he's coming back as a spirit. How the, the, the man, the body, the form that he came back in during the second era is not going to come back. And he's letting us know that throughout scriptures, he's told us that he is coming back as a spirit um and you know why is it that we can't understand that because he's reiterated it several times throughout the scripture from the new testament to the old that he would be coming back in a different way this time i think you're referring to over in john uh chapter 4 verse 23 when it says uh but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Right. Mm -hmm. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So, you're saying, or the scripture is saying, that the Father has already returned. Yep, he's already here. And, um, you know, it says those who have an eye and an ear to hear and see uh, will know this. Well, they have already noticed that he's is here. So we're going to be coming out of the third testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, just to let you guys know, you can find a free PDF on the third testament of the Bible on the internet. If you come in and do a search for the word or for the phrase third testament dot PDF, and don't forget that period there, dot PDF will give you the PDF. Now I'm looking here in Microsoft Bing. And I don't see the results that I want to see as far as the Third Testament of the Bible. Don't get confused by all of these other books that are named the Third Testament because they are actually not it. Some of them are abridged, some of them are paraphrased, and some of them are totally different books altogether. Mm -hmm. If you want to find the Third Testament of the Bible PDF, you need to go to Google. For some reason, Bing doesn't find it. But then when you come to Google and type in thirdtestament.pdf, you see this website called jesus-comes.com, and it has an upload of the Third Testament of the Bible. When you click on it, it appears like this. There's uh, about 592 pages in this document, and by simply clicking... Um, this save button, you can actually download it to your computer, or I would suggest you almost accidentally hit that print button and actually print you off a copy of this book because it's getting quite hard to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, what verse you want to jump down to, Stay? Well, let's go to chapter 1, verse 30. All right, so there are about 65 chapters in this book. You're jumping down. You said chapter 1, which is waiting for the second coming, and you go on to verse 30. What section is that? You remember? This is the section of hope and expectations. Hopes and expectations. So we're going down to page 30. Verse 30. The evidence that I come in spirit to communicate with humanity will not be accepted by all, in spite of the testimonies, because materialism will act as a blindfold of darkness for the eyes of some. Okay, and so in this section, I... Well, let me just say, I went in and words to... Um, words that would help us understand it a little bit better. Um, I got the evidence that I am here in spirit to communicate with humanity will not be received by all regardless of the testimonies, regardless of the evidence or the proof. The For materialism, that belief that only what I experience, what I know, and what I practice can be explained, that belief would be a blindfold of darkness for the eyes of some. Yeah, well, I'm coming back up here and I'm looking at verse 28. It says, let the world not await a new Messiah. Right. If I promised to you that I would return, I also made it known that my coming would be spiritual. So this is what it's saying that it's going to be a block for many people. Their materialism is going to block them from recognizing him in the spirit. Yeah, materialism is going to want for him to come back in something that we can see and touch. Um, it's regardless of 
the testimonies, what regardless of the dreams people have, regardless of people saying, you know, um, I, um, I believe he's coming back as a spirit. The scripture speaks of it. People are not going to want to hear it. They're not going to want to hear it at all. And they're going to want to see him come back as well, a man. Well, I was trying to see where I was going to fit this part into this discussion. But if you remember the other day, we had a discussion with your pastor. Mm -hmm. and, and you remember that? We were, we, we were in the car um, with your grandma pastor headed on a trip. And I asked her about the uh, second coming of Christ. Yeah, I think you asked her, I think you made the statement that some say he's already here. And she said, I don't know about that. And then she said, but I guess he is here if he's here in spirit or something like that. Yeah, this is a pastor that's been around for over 50 years, um, built her own church or whatever, and is... Um, I want to say hard, fast believer in the church doctrine, yeah. which points to the Messiah returning when the sky cracks. Yes. And she did refer to that. But when she thought about it, and that was surprising to me, that's why I bring it up. When she thought about it, when I first mentioned that he had already returned in the spirit, it's like it kind of caught her. Um, her thought on the subject actually surprised her a little bit. And she said, yeah, he's, he is actually already here. Mm -hmm. I well, was, I was actually surprised. I was too. That. That's why I bring it up. I believe I'm going to try to, if I can find that clip where I recorded it, I'm going to go ahead and play it right here for everybody to hear. But the point is, is that when even the hardened pastors and preachers who have been teaching church doctrine for a long time, when they ever stop and think about, that Holy Spirit that we preach on, mm -hmm. it's real easy to make the connection that, yeah, that, that's him. He's already returned. He lives inside of us. We could hear him through that small, still voice that we hear about in relationship to our conscience. He's already returned. Yeah. Um, like I said, I was surprised to hear her say that because, you know, we've been under her teachings before and she has totally stuck to the he's coming back in a cloud and he's going to be, you know, up in the sky. The, the, the same picture that you see in pictures, you know, you, yeah. that you hang on your wall that he's going to be hold, having his arms open or waiting for his children to come back. And we're going to see the man that looks exactly like the man we see on the pictures yeah. saying, come on up to heaven. And so I was surprised to hear her say that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, let's go on to verse 31. Okay, 31 says... Well, let me read. I'm okay. reading. How many would like to see Christ suffer again in this world and receive from him the miracle so that they could believe in his presence or his existence? But truly, I tell you, on this earth, there will not again be a manger to see me born as a man, nor another Golgotha to see me die. Now, all those who are resuscitated into true life shall feel my birth in their hearts, just as those who remain in sin shall feel me die. Mm -hmm. um, so I translated and I used that word loosely it to say how many would like to see the Christ feel that physical and mental pain again in this world? Because they want to see him come back as a human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know thing about it if if he ever came here as a human again he would be persecuted the same way he was before yeah he, it, yeah that i mean yeah i it's, think that's just a given mm -hmm. yeah it's just i mean it's just the way it's going to be people even people who claim to love him are still going to be caught off guard by the fact that he's walking around as a human mm -hmm. and they're not going to know how to react to him and they're going to chase him down and try to take pictures of him and try to you know make him do stuff mm -hmm. even if they do recognize him and, and the ones who don't recognize him well they're they're going to try to kill him again well yeah because even though we you know, or say that say that we're followers of him. We still have this image of who he want, who we want him to come back as. We don't want him to come back as poor. We don't want him to be all humble and and barefooted and all this stuff. We still so sort of think as they did back then. We want him to come back in all his majesty and all his splendor. And if that means that he got to die on the cross and go through all that pain and stuff again, 
Um, just so we can, yeah, just so just we can so realize. Yeah, so we can know he, they, he existed. We're, we're all right with that. Well, let me jump back up to verse 27. I know I'm jumping around, but it mm -hmm. says, Do you wish humanity not to recognize my new manifestation in order to continue waiting for me according to your belief and not according to that which I promised you? Mm -hmm. So we see in, in John in chapter 20, John in chapter 4, that our Father seeketh those that will worship him in the spirit. And even over in the book of Revelation and chapter 19, we see that when he comes back, he will have a new name and that name will be called the word of God. And and what we're re reading from in this class is the third testament of the Bible, which is the word of God. But yet many don't want to see him return in that fashion. They actually want to see him differently. Yeah. You know, going back to 27, where it says, you know, do you wish not to know how I'm going to come back. And he says that, um, do you not want to know my new appearance so that you can continue waiting for me according to your beliefs and not according to that which I promised you? Because he promised us, he told us that he was coming back as, as spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, for some reason, we don't want to believe that. We want him to come back according to what we believe and not according to what scripture and as you, you, you spoke on that a little bit earlier when you talked about 2000 years ago when people did the exact same thing. They thought that he was coming back as a powerful ruler, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, all money, all resources that he needed to, you know, put everybody in their place. Right. And then when he came barefoot and homeless, they was like, no, that can't be him. Mm -hmm. And so they denied him. And said, you know, we're waiting for somebody else, somebody that's coming according to what we think, which is all dressed in purple, riding around on chariots of fire, smiting everybody that says or even thinks anything bad towards them or whatever. Yeah, or even just uh, coming back in the sky and, you know, uh, telling all, I don't know, what what do we expect? Is telling everybody to come on up to me or whatever. Um, the whole sky crack yeah, story. Yeah, the whole sky crack story. Well, there's supposed to be um, the sky is supposed to crack, and then we're supposed to see him come across the sky, followed or preceded by ten thousand times ten thousand angels. But it doesn't really say anything about him us coming up there. It's more like he's coming down here to defend the people who keep the covenant or something like that. So. We've, we've added a lot yeah, to the story. I was thinking. We you know, just go, we're just going by, you know, somebody that paints a pretty picture. And we're like, yeah, we like put that into the Bible. And now we're thinking that that's, a, that's what he said. And I've even heard people preach on it. And, you know, so, preaching on the pictures. Somebody yeah, drew a picture yeah. and fabricated it in their mind. And now somebody will give an entire sermon on yeah. this picture that somebody. <laughs> I have, yeah. I have heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe so. <laughs> Okay, so we're on uh, 32. See that many people of this time scrutinized the scripture of the past times, meditating on the prophets and trying to penetrate in the promises made by Christ to return. So that's just saying that how we go over, we take our scripture and we go over every detail of scripture trying to find out exactly what the prophets are saying he said trying to discern the promises made by the christ to return seeing if we can see anything different yeah but you know the thing is we aren't really seeing what's there you know a lot of times they'll go to first thessalonians chapter 4 or they'll go to first corinthians chapter 15 but they'll ignore specific elements of those two verses they, they, they go to these verses all the time and it's like as many times as you've read these verses, are you not seeing this part about him saying the last trump? Mm -hmm. He's saying that he's coming at the last trump with the archangel, with the trump of God, you know, and then the dead shall rise and he shall descend. And, you know, we so we, we, we are pointing to those two verses, trying to see if we can find something new. But I believe the problem is, is that we are rejecting what's already there. Yeah. And, yeah. and how can, how can we expect to see truth when, when, you know, we've, we've started off trying to ignore the truth of what's already presented to us in those verses. Yeah. Truth has been presented to us, but 
we don't want that truth. We want our own truth. Yeah, because it clearly says that 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 uh, that sky crack moment that we talked about is coming at the last Trump. But we we don't want it to come at the last Trump. We want it to come before the first Trump. And why is that? So that we don't have to endure the tribulation. Yeah, that's exactly right. The first Trump. Uh, um, involves uh, fire and brimstone and hell mixed with blood and all kinds of bad things happen to the planet and humans during the first Trump. So you, we don't want to be here and be a part of that at all. We want to be gone mm -hmm. and thrust into the spirit world um, and not partake in any of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 33. 33 says, listen to how they say the master is near. The Lord is here or he shall soon arrive. And then add the signs of his return are clear and palpable. Yeah, so we're hearing that being said, but it's being said by those that are seeing or those that know that he's coming back as a spirit. Well, is that what it's saying? That those who, who are saying this are knowing that he's coming back in the spirit? Mm -hmm. Because going to 34, it says... Um, some seek me, well, you read 34 and 35, read those together and then it'll make sense. Some seek me and call me, others feel my presence, and still others foresee my coming in the spirit. Oh, if only that thirst for knowing was present in all, and if all had that belonging to find the supreme truth. So does that, is that what you believe is saying? That those who are seeing that those who are saying he will soon come and then add the signs of his return are clear and evidence are those who are are seeing him in spirit saying that the, the, so so okay so to make so what's going on here then is you have people who are reading Matthew chapter 24 Mark chapter 13 Luke chapter 22 and they're seeing all of these events either taking place or have taken place in the past and saying, okay, well, where is the father at? Mm -hmm. But it's only those who recognize him spiritually are seeing him right. while the other ones are still trying to, they're, they're still well waiting for him to come in some materialistic form. Right. In 35, I have, oh, if only that thirst for knowing was present in all and if all had the longing to find that greatest truth. Of, of his spiritual nature right mm -hmm. yeah but it seems like the majority are caught up in the material nature but i think that's where we started from back up there in verse 30 uh verse 30 or 31 where it says that materialism will be a blindfold of darkness for the eyes of some so let's talk about that a little bit about how materialism is going to be a blindfold of darkness for for the eyes of some because you know well when you have on a blindfold you can't see right and that's what materialism does it blinds shuts, you. yeah it blinds you that you can't see you you don't when even if it's right there in front of you you know when you're blindfold say if you're playing with uh, Charade, uh, uh yeah the, the pin a tail on the yeah, donkey the, the game we used to play as a kid pin a tail on the donkey and sometimes you would see people would just stand right there in front of you and, and just wave yeah, wave in. Yeah. Can you see? Can you see? So when materialism blindfold you, you can't even see it. It's sitting right there in scripture telling you, I am coming back as a spirit. I'm coming back as truth, you know. Or even when he's actually back, you feeling him inside of your conscious, yeah. feeling him inside all around you. But yet the materialism is stopping you from even recognizing that he's even there. Mm -hmm. And let's explain what materialism is. Is and when we talk about materialism, we're talking about matter. We're talking about the physical, the 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 mental comforts of this life. Uh, we're talking about things that we can see, things that we can touch, things that make sense to us, things that we can explain. The ma materialism is the opposite of spiritualism. Mm -hmm. When when a person is spiritual, they recognize. Those things that can't be seen, those things that require faith, you know, to to believe in because they're not evident, not in our face, not able to be touched, not tangible. Mm -hmm. And so materialism, a person that's materialistic only sees or, you know, only can see those things that are material. Right. They don't they can't see anything spiritual at all, even are trained to shun anything spiritual. 
to separate themselves from anything spiritual. So how, being that, that being said, and we knowing that the Father is going to come back or is already here as spirit and truth, how do those people who are materialistic flip and become spiritualized? For the, for the majority of them, the majority of the 7.5 billion people on the planet, we don't know how many of them are going to go away in the first wave, of, you know, when that first trumpet blows, so many of them will go away and, and, and be gone into the spirit world. Those that are left will be, hum be humbled. They will lose their materialism. We see, you could imagine the day before when they spent their whole life on the cell phone um, or on the television watching YouTube videos or, you know, doing whatever they want to do. They was mm -hmm. completely distracted from anything spiritual. And then all of a sudden you have this earthquake or this war or this, um, um, I think the first trumpet's talking about a meteor shower that comes and destroys everything that they have. Mm -hmm. So now you have this person who has nothing whereas yesterday they had everything cars they could go anywhere they wanted they had all the food they wanted they had trinkets they had toys they had this they had that now they have nothing but this dirt patch that they're sitting on mm -hmm. and that is going to cause them to start thinking start exploring their you know their own thoughts they don't have anything distracting them there's no radio they could turn on there's no tv they could turn on it's nothing but them and their own thoughts and you know so you have them there with their own thoughts so now all you need is to add an element of need in there where they will actually start praying mm -hmm. they'll start praying for you know food or praying for shelter or praying for security or something and then they will be able to recognize the answers that they get and it's going to surprise them that the answer will come from within instead of without. Yeah, so humility. They're going, we're going to have to be humble in order to be able to open up ourselves or even to just be still and see that, that the Father is here. Well, see, here. But the thing is humility in a way that takes our stuff from us. So mm -hmm. We're going to have to be separated from our stuff. Whether we do it before the apocalypse, during the uh, or during the apocalypse, you know, one way or the other is going away. You know, speaking on our own lives, at yeah. one time, you know, we had a bunch of toys to play with. Right. You know, but you know, those toys, those things that were separating us from acknowledging the Father's presence, are now gone. They were all removed. Right. Anything that was materialistic in our lives is now gone away. And once it went away, then we could start to hear his voice and recognize that he was there. Well, that's going to happen to all of humanity. The only question is, when is it going to happen before the apocalypse like it's doing for you now, where you're studying and meditating and learning on your own? Or are you going to be amongst the billions of people that have to wait until that trumpet blast and after Wait for your stuff to be physically, forcefully removed from your hands. And, and then you put in a position where you have to call out to the, you put in a position of tribulation that's going to cause you to call on to him. And then you will recognize it. Yeah, it's amazing how when all the stuff is removed and even how you can sometimes, the father even, and you know, this is spoken about even in, um, I think it's the book of Exodus. Where um, you can, he will put you, make you hungry, and and how that just opens up your mind to be able to see him in a different light. Yeah, you know how he told the children of Israel how I put you, put hunger on you, yeah, so that you can um, to prove you, yeah, to prove you, and you know I was look looking at a um, I was looking at a comment somebody had made about. On a channel where they said, you know, you should uh, buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. And this other was like, buy seed, buy seed, buy seed. And this guy was like, well, I need to buy seed when I can have gold. And he was like, I can take a year, a ear of corn. And if you're hungry enough, I can buy, take all the gold you want. All the gold yeah. you want. <laughs> but so, anyway. Yeah. So humil hum humility is I believe the key yeah. to overcoming materialism. Yeah, that definitely answers your question. What's going to change humanity to realize that the Father is already there? Is it's going to be through through humility? And we did a we did a whole class on that 
a whole series on that. Mm -hmm. um, chapter uh, 55, I think it was, um, the purification of the earth. Um, talks about all of the different ways that we're going to be uh, humble, not just this pandemic, people losing their jobs and fires and earthquakes. But I mean, it's a lot of stuff that's going to go on. That's going to cause man to, like we said, he's going to sit by himself and start praying and meditating. And then he's going to hear that voice and he's going to say, well, what is that? Who is that that's talking to me? Mm -hmm. And then he's going to realize that that's the father who is already who has returned mm -hmm. and is communicating with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go to 36. See how in all religions and sects, men scrutinize the time, life and events with the hope of discovering the signs that announce my coming. They are innocent who do not know that for some time I have been manifesting myself and that I am about to end this form of communication. So that's just talking about how the religions are... Um are, are seeking him throughout yeah. different religions seeking him but I think the one thing that I want you to talk about uh, is when he says I'm about to end this form of communication with him <laughs> you always bring that part out I always bring that part out yeah be, because it's a little bit tricky in the third testament it talks about how the spirit descended on man in about 1866 when Roe Rogers was first contacted with the Elijah spirit then in 1884 uh, a lady named Damiano Aviedo started receiving the teachings, but it wasn't just her. It was a group of people all over the world that was receiving uh, this knowledge, this light, this ray, this understanding of, of kind of like prophecies they were receiving and they were writing this down. And they did this from 1884 all the way up until 1950 when it stopped. All, all of this that they had been receiving uh, to create what we now know as the Third Testament of the Bible, that communication ended in 1950. And that's what he's talking about here when he says that he's coming to an end. Is that also talking about the prophecies and the prophets? Well, yeah, it's talking about, yeah, because that's a lot of like what they were doing. They were kind of like being prophets when they were hearing directly from the Father and then writing it down in the book. You know, mm -hmm. and thus say if the Lord kind of deal, that's, that's what a prophet does. You see, he hears the word where the rest of us can't. Right. Well, they received that, you know, back there before 1950. But, you know, during that time, there was a lot of these ministers around. That's how you know it was so prevalent around the world is you had all of these preachers that were talking about how they were hearing from the father. And they were, according to what we understand, they were. This was mm -hmm. people like Billy Graham. People like um, trying to think of some of the uh, some of the older um, ministers that, you know, are around before 1950. Your pastor that we keep talking about, mm -hmm. she she might have been part of that group. You know, she's almost 100 years old now, but right. she still remembers those days. Well, in 1950, that form of communication stopped. Mm -hmm. Where and and it makes sense because we have it, it, the reason why they got that communication was to create the third testament of the Bible, mm -hmm. just like they did um, to create the Old Testament and the New. Well, there's no need to keep on hearing that information because it's going to become confusing. Mm -hmm. You got the third testament in your hand, but you got somebody over here that's teaching um, yeah. something you know something new or whatever mm -hmm. is is it it. it it had to go away yeah. or you would have people for forever saying the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that like they're doing now changing the rules. <laughs> no, you don't trust anybody who says that they, that the Lord told them thus and so on forth since 1950. It ended then. Especially if it's not consistent. Yeah, consistent with scripture. Yes. So that's what it talks about. Um, I am about to end this form of communication and see, we're here in the beginning of, the third testament yeah, chapter, one. chapter one as yeah. you proceed through the third testament you see that that kind of talk it changes mm -hmm. where you know at towards the end he's talking about you know how towards the end of the third testament he's talking about how this form of communication is already ended mm -hmm. and how you shouldn't be paying attention to those who uh, who say that it didn't end right saying that they mm -hmm. still hear from god but anyway 37 says, but I tell you also that many of those who are so anxiously waiting for me, if they witness the form in which I have come to communicate, would not only not recognize me, but would flatly deny me. Well, flat out deny him. Yeah. 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 If they, if they understood, or even if they, it says if they witness the form that I, that I have come to communicate with them, 
they would just flat out deny him. And they doing that. They doing now. Yeah. Yeah. You go to any YouTube channel on on, and I say probably ninety nine percent of the channels. On YouTube, if you was to go in and start talking to them about how the Father has returned or the Third Testament or anything like that, they're they're going to be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees of old times. They're going to just flat out deny him and say, "No, that ain't him." It seems like it's just a repeat. Yes, yeah, so definitely some a repeat. Of the same things that happened back then are some of the same things that are going on now. Yeah, he his his life was definitely a living parable. You know, for us to realize that you know we can't dictate how it is that he comes, and we always have to expect him to come in a humble manner mm. you're not really expecting him to come you know in all this pomp and grandeur mm -hmm. austerity you know can be no part of him but you know and so yeah the same thing is going on now mm -hmm. and they are they are denying him some of the wisest smartest bible teachers on right. youtube will flat out straight deny that this is the lord talking in the third testament of the bible mm -hmm. yeah it's back again some you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees they were pretty smart guys. Yeah, you know? they were they smart. They studied all the time, but what did they do? Just like you said, they flat out denied that he was who he said he was. But only because he didn't appear the way they thought he should, mm -hmm. and so that's what's going on now. Because people expect him to come with the sky cracking, riding across the sky, chariots of fire. Mm -hmm. Because they don't see that, right? Then it must not he, he must not be back. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thirty eight. To them, only the testimonies will come, and by these means they shall believe that I was among my children. Yeah, he's saying to them only the testimonies will come, and as he said, by these statements they will believe that I am among my children. But you said by they was by that I was that I was among my children, and that's going back to the statement that my this communication is about to end. Well, it it, it and and forward too. This is also talking about even up until the millennial age, even up until the tribulation, when people are going through all of this turmoil and stuff. You will have those who are yet still alive that don't recognize the Father in in the Spirit. But there will be those around who do have the testimony that he is in the spirit as part of that whole denying me thing. Mm -hmm. um, there will be people who will recognize and, you know, so they'll hear the testimonies. But what the point of this is what it's saying is that's all they're going to get. They ain't going to get the intuition. They ain't going right. to get the dreams. They ain't going to get the voices by way of conscious. Mm -hmm. they're, all they're going to have is testimony. When Those you got yeah. this person over here that's completely, you know, independent and, and isolated from this person over here. But they're both saying the same thing. that we've, we, We're hearing this voice of the Father coming by way of our intuition, our dreams, our conscious, and the third testament of the Bible. Yeah, so it will be like secondhand. Yeah, they, they're gonna get yeah. secondhand knowledge, and the reason why is because they denied him. Mm -hmm. They de yeah. they they're denying that he has returned, and so they won't get the they won't get the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last thirty nine. You also awaited for me intimately with impatience, but I knew that you would recognize me and that you would be my laborers in this era. So he's saying that at one time we were the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he said that he we weren't the same way, not as the ones who were denying him. We were of the ones that may not have been recognizing him. Right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. because I remember telling you guys, I, I don't like talking about myself too much, but I remember telling you, telling people mm -hmm. way back as early as 2014 that the Messiah had returned. Yeah. He was back. Mm -hmm. He was here. Mm -hmm. And I knew that he was in that he was that spirit he was here in the spirit i didn't have a scripture to go on right but you know i do remember you know making the statements that he has already yeah returned. i do remember you making that statement i do remember thinking you were crazy <laughs> yeah yeah and you know it, it, because because i was expecting him to come back as a man yeah. i was expecting him to come back as a man crack the sky him come and swoop us all up us and take and take us up to quote unquote glory. And when you were making the statements that he's here back, you know, as spirit and though you didn't have the third testament um there to to help you um understand to, to formulate the words, right? Yeah, I, I just I, I, I couldn't understand it. It didn't make no sense to me because it did not line up with what I had been taught. And so it's a lot of people out there, you know, 
maybe not the maybe or maybe not the ones listening to this video. Mm -hmm. If if they are, they just need to to try the spirit by the spirit. You go out in a in a in a in a, in a, in a natural place like a park or you know out the door somewhere where you're looking at grass and trees instead of you know concrete and buildings, and pray and sit back and listen and you know s give him the opportunity to make himself known to you. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Speaking about that, it says, goes back to, this is chapter 1 and 20, it says, Men will feel my presence and discern this universal ray of light that showers and rests upon them. They saw me beforehand without knowledge of, and it's talking about without knowledge of this third testament. So that was sort of what you experienced. Yeah, yeah. Knowing, knowing that he's already returned. Can't really put the words to it, mm -hmm. you know, but you know for sure that he's already returned. And so then you have, and so after this revelation, you're going to have those people who are still going to say, no, he ain't returned because he, re when he returns, it's going to be the great and dreadful day of the Lord. We're going to have a sky cracking. We're going to have, you know, all of this at the seven, at the last Trump with the Trump of God and all of that. But, you know, we have to understand that the great and dreadful day of the Lord and the second coming of Christ is not the same event. Mm -hmm. You know, that second coming of Christ has already taken place, whereas the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes at yeah. the end. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You can think of the, the second coming as, as coming at the beginning, while the day of the Lord is coming at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, almost a, you know, long, it's a long period of time, 1866 to about 2027. You're talking almost 200 years difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the, the Messiah is here the spirit of truth is here just because it did not come in the form that we expected just because the messiah did not come in the form that the pharisees and the sadducees expected does not mean that he is not here does not mean that he was not there they had the king of kings walking around in front of them and yet they didn't even realize they're not they're doing the same thing now but i had i had this part too because stacy you from a Pentecostal church, mm -hmm. which I've always said that the Pentecostal church are the most in tune to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, this spirit that, that they call the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost or, or something, it should be real easy to recognize that spirit as the second coming of Christ. Yeah. Because if you don't, if you don't recognize the Holy Ghost that people talk about, oh, I got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Spirit. If that ain't God, then who is it? Right. Think about that for a second. If that ain't the return of Christ, if that ain't return okay. of the Father, you talking about you got a spirit living inside of you, talking to you, telling you to do stuff or whatever. If it ain't God, then who is it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. What is this spirit? If it ain't God, yeah. If it ain't the if it ain't the return of Christ, if that ain't Christ's return, if that ain't him and they're talking to you, then you know. <laughs> I don't know what what could it be. It, mm -hmm. it, it, that's the only thing it could be, unless it's of evil nature. Yeah. If you got the Holy Ghost, then you should already recognize that the Father has returned. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. That's true. What is this other spirit? If it ain't the Holy Ghost, if it's it got to be the. It's it got to be the Father. Father, like John says, he expects us to worship in spirit and truth. Yeah. Well, that's all I have. Well, I guess that's that on that. And we will see you guys in the next one. Shalom. Shalom.